My name is Christine Dwyer and I'm a Superstar Diamond 2 Team Beach Body Coach. I started I, in May 31st of 2008. I am not a founding coach. I'm coming up on my eight year anniversary and I really wanted to do these interviews with different coaches that are, have different stories, different levels of success, but uh, really more so rather than just tell you about the amazing products that we have and the stats of the company and the fitness trainers and all that stuff, I can tell you where to go to learn about the nuts and the bolts of the business later. If you want to go and read the compensation plan, I will send that off to y'all. But I think what's most valuable for people to figure out what coaching is about is to actually hear real life conversations and story and to see how someone has been able to transform their life by using coaching as a platform. So today I'm excited that we get to interview Mrs. Tara Carr. She's a 15 star diamond coach. So what that means is when you're building your business, there's different rank levels that you can build and the highest level that you build up to is 15 star diamond and that's on one business center. Now you can build 15 star diamond on multiple business centers. The difference with this business is that you can open up 25 businesses of yourself, basically, if you think of it kind of like a franchise. And not every network marketing company has that ability. So you can open up 25 of yourself and keep growing each of them. And Tara is also in the Millionaire Club. She was actually the first and the youngest, ooh, we gotta tell this one, right? The youngest coach to hit 15 star diamond coach. She was the first one and she did it while she was living overseas in Japan. So she is a military wife, her husband is in the Green Beret, and uh, we're gonna have her talk about her story, but I just wanted to get her quick introduction because we're gonna have her talk more about herself. So thanks so much, Tara, for being so patient and joining us. Of course, well, thank you. Um, yeah, like Christine said, so I am not your typical story. I have a lot of people where they just, they're awesome at fitness. They work out every day, they love to post their sweaty selfies, super proud of it. I hate working out. Still to this day, I hate it. I'm just like, ah, do I have to? Like, oh my God. I do it. And I, and I do it because I know once I get it done, it makes me feel better. And I don't always get to it every single day. I'm honest with people because I'm going to attract people who are most like me. And I don't want them to think they're going to fail if one day they don't do their workout. So mm -hmm. I do my best. I've got three kids. Nora's running around like crazy right now, biting people. So it's just, we do what we can do, right? But right. when I started coaching, I started because my marriage was on the rocks of divorce. I mean, I was miserable. I was threatening divorce all the time. It, it was the norm of what I knew of, of the product of, you know, me growing up. And I just wasn't happy. I was 65 pounds overweight and I made excuses. Every excuse in the book. My poor husband, man, he tried so hard. If there was something he could buy me, because I would say I would use it, he would buy it and then I wouldn't use it. And then I would get mad at him for telling me I didn't use it. Like, it made no sense. So the last straw was him saying, I will buy you $300 something dollar treadmill when we have no money. We're on WIC checks. We're in $35,000 of debt. But if you promise you're going to use it, I'll buy it. I think I used it twice. It became a clothes rack. I mean, it was awful. But it was that moment of sitting on the treadmill just in tears. I think it was our final strong moment where he was ready to leave for a three-month deployment. And I was like, I, I think I should just go home with Noah. Like, this isn't working. It isn't working. I'm not happy. You should love me for who I am. Even though I didn't love who I was for who I was at the moment, I was holding a double standard. And he was like, babe, there, there's a different answer. There's, why don't you do P PX? We had he used it to get ready to become a green brain. I was like, Psh, I am not trying that. I will die. I'm not doing it. So at the time I did turbo jam, actually, everyone thinks it was turbo fire. It was easiest in the infomercial to use the word turbo fire, but yeah. it was turbo jam. And I did take classes on base. Turbo fire wasn't even out yet at the time. And I loved it. I lost 49 pounds in nine days. I just felt on top of the world. I mean, my confidence was soaring. I didn't have to have bedroom lights out anymore. Like it was just crazy. Like so many different areas in my life that people don't see, right? It was like the internal changes that were happening. And I finally, you know, had our second son. I bought Turbo Fire at that time, did the program, knocked out of the park, and my results again for a free t-shirt. And you all know that before picture, right? Like you don't want anyone to see the picture. I'm actually the headless person in the before picture because I didn't even want to see my own head in it. It was that bad. I'm busting almost a size 14 at five foot two. I'm wearing a rubber band to hold my pants together because I refuse to go up a size. 
And I say to my husband, I can win this free t-shirt if I submit my book after, but do you think anyone's going to see this? Cause it's really bad, babe. Like I don't want uh-huh. anyone to see this. And you got to know my husband. He's like, get over yourself, babe. There's thousands of people who are probably wanting these shirts. Like nobody's going to see your picture. And I'm like, okay. So I sign away and I wake up the next morning and I'm on the front screen of beachbody.com with my before and after. Like, car, lost 62 pounds in 90 days. And I was like, I'm finished. I like, I had old friends writing me. I never knew you were that big. And I'm like, yep, that that's me. But did you see my after that? I'm not like that anymore, you know, but yeah. I wasn't a coach. I was just a customer and I loved technology and I loved the programs. And so they asked me why I wasn't a coach. I thought I did something wrong. I profusely apologized and I was stealing some free t-shirt because I wasn't a coach. Long story short, it was just awful, right? But I, I signed up and I actually signed up. A lot of people don't know this fun fact. And I never told it until Wayne Wyatt talked about it out loud at some. I was like, I should probably explain this. I actually was a coach under Wayne Wyatt. I signed up. I was his free customer. So okay. He was assigned to me and I reached out. I didn't hear anything back. So I wrote his wife, Anita. Didn't hear anything back. I was super impatient. I was looking up all these people on YouTube, like, I love your story, and I'm, I'm a coach, but I don't know what I'm doing. And Lauren Knight was actually one of the, the girls who wrote me back and was like, girl, I'll Skype with you in my underwear if you want me to. Like, I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning, let's do this. And we actually had many Skype dates in our underwear and pajamas because we're moms. We just had to make it work, right? But yeah, I became a coach, dying many one days. I went to Summit, went to my first Platinum Presenters meeting. I'll never forget. It was like maybe your first one you did it at Summit. It was super small and intimate. And you had the trainers come up and talk. And I looked at Lauren. I was and I was like, I'm going to speak on Christine Dwyer's stage someday. Like, that's my next school, Lauren. And she looked at me like, cool. Okay. Yeah, that's great. You know, because you get the coaches who tell you these things. Like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I said, it would be five star that next year. And Lauren and I got to speak together at our event with you. I mean, yeah. we were five stars that follow year. So it was a total full circle moment, you know, but yeah, coaching just kind of, I think coaching found me. I didn't find it. It was just, I was a customer and it fell into my lap and I thought, why not? This is perfect. It's just, it's a great fit, but okay. But yeah. So let me jump in because it kind of just gave us like a whole span story, like a whole big thing. So let's yeah. just kind of break this up. And it's kind of funny that we are, again, promoting Lauren because last week we, or was it last week or the week before I interviewed Lisa Mohage yeah. and she's sponsored with Lauren as well. So Lauren's getting all this promotion. But <laughs> the, the thing is, is what I really wanted to focus on, and I've got a lot of questions that I want to ask. Um, and also we did poll people who were going to be attending to find out what one of the number one questions that they want you to answer is. So I do want to oh. ask you that as well. But let's kind of go back to your life where, again, you were living in Japan and you were over there uh, because obviously Adam was stationed over there. And was he available or was he gone? Were you raising Noah all by yourself? Is that why you were depressed? And how did you let yourself get out of shape? Is it you just didn't lose your baby weight? Take us to that point. For sure. So I, I, we got married at 19, super young in a courthouse. You know, I had all these dreams and then I didn't have, and I didn't care. We had orders to go to Washington last minute, week before we were supposed to move. They're like, just kidding. You're going to, so I kicked and cried and I was a little diva. Like I'm not going there. Yeah. And then I ended up loving it. It was the best experience of my life. But when we first got there, I was young, dumb and immature. I mean, I, we got there and they're like, oh, by the way, Adam, you're, you're leaving in like a week and a half. And I'm like, we just got here. I don't even know how to drive. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I was freaking out, but I had to learn to adapt. And so it was hard. It was hard because I didn't know anyone. And I, I was anorexic for a couple years of my life, a, a very quiet anorexic. But I had a lot of body images growing up when I was little. And, and so how I kind of fixed that was I went the opposite and I would binge eat and I would comfort eat and I would hide Snickers wrappers when he would come home, you know, and, yeah. and I would, and I would just like, I would lie. And I didn't understand why I would lie. I'd be like, Oh, I'm just, I'm trying, but I wasn't, I was eating Snickers in my car. Like, but mentally I couldn't understand it. It was cause I wanted to just, I wanted to fill something. I wanted to feel this void that I had. I wanted to get rid of it. And I thought food was the answer, but it wasn't. And so Noah was 
about 13 and a half months old when I was at my biggest. I mean, when I got pregnant with him, I was a size two. And after I had him, I was a four. So a lot of people, you know, they would tell me, you're being so hard on yourself. It's baby weight. It's baby weight. And I'm like, no, it's not. This is not baby weight. This is depression. This this is me not wanting to get out of bed and feeling just like a crappy mother because I would put cartoons on and just let Noah uh, play around a little gate, you know, with his toys. And I would lay there and watch him and I would binge with TV because I just was depressed. But he was, I mean, he was deployed 10 months out of every year. And that part didn't change even all the way through my business. He was gone that much. And so you want to talk about having to figure out ADHD with the business and kids and being a wife crazy. But I mean, I have strong ADHD. I've had it my whole life. It's why I was a D average student. It was why I never went to college. It was why my house was always a mess. Mm -hmm. And so definitely I would say being overweight was just because I, I got thrown into a situation and I couldn't handle it all. And so instead of trying to handle anything, I completely just went inward and I turned to food. So so when you were um, deciding to do P90X, like you said, Adam would buy you anything that you wanted just to try to make you mm-hmm. happy. So then what really about P90X, why did you commit to it? Because you weren't working with your coach that you were assigned to. You said it was Wayne. So you weren't working with him. So what really, here you were eating secretly Snickers and you know pretending like you're trying. So why then would P90X really motivate you to really push through and do it even when no one was helping you, but it was really all on your shoulders. So P90X is what Adam told me to do. He already owned it. We already had the DVDs. He bought it as an infomercial for himself to go through a Q course in 2007. So he wanted me to do that because we had it. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to die. Like, I can't do it, right? Yeah. So the deciding factor picking a program was really Adam. He, He knew of Shaleen because of P90X. Mm -hmm. And he's like, she's just bubbly. She's fun. She seems like you, you don't like to work out, but it doesn't seem like she makes it like you're working out. So I think you would like it. And honestly, it was my last saving grace at saving marriage in my mindset, because I knew that it wasn't Adam of why I wasn't happy. I I knew that he was amazing to me, but it was myself. Like I, I had to learn to love myself before before I could fully love him. And I had had a lot of walls in my life from growing up, a lot of crappy relationships come from a divorced family, daddy issues, a lot of walls. And so I just knew it was me. I was like, yeah, I have to figure it out. And so when he left, I put my own countdown calendar on the wall of when Adam was going to get back. And every day that I did not want to do that workout, I would look at the wall and I'm like, he's going to be home in 32 days. He's getting home in 15 days. Like I have got to kill my nutrition. I have got to kill this workout because I want to just to prove to him that I not only cared about myself, but I cared about myself because I cared about us. Mm-hmm. And when he came home from the airport, he didn't even recognize me. He saw Noah and he kind of did one of those, like, where's your mother look? And then like, he looked and he was like, oh my gosh. Like, and at first it's Adam. And he's like, did I push you to this? Like, I'm so sorry. You know? And I'm like, no, I feel great. Like I am thankful that we have that relationship where we can just stay things to each other at face value. I asked him when he didn't want to hear certain things and he does the same for me still to this day. So it was, it was that, it was that I cared about my marriage and I knew that I had to fix it by caring about myself. Well, I mean, knowing you for the time that we've been, you know, spending building this business together, Mm -hmm. I know that you are a competitive person. So would you say then that you really were doing it more so because he was away and you just really wanted to kind of shock or prove to him like I had this complete different like he didn't recognize you did you do it for that reason yeah any you give me a challenge I'll do it like if there's a contest like who can eat the biggest ice cream sundae in five minutes I want to win like I don't even care what it is I just want to win like I don't even know if there's I don't even care if there's a prize but if it's a t-shirt clearly I'm gonna go all the way for a t-shirt so (laughs) it's just you know little challenges for me but that was it it was like I I think it would have been different had he had been home every day, but just because of who I am and how I'm wired. So okay. it worked to my advantage that he deployed and it, and it was easy for me to do that. But in hindsight, you know, I obviously keep my fitness up now and he's home with me every day. Yeah. And it's just that I mean, I do it because I have to choose to love myself. It's a reminder every day that God gave me this body and I'm going to take it because when I eat Snickers and I hide it in my car and I'm doing it often, I am not honoring the body that I have. And so it's just a, a reminder and a choice that I have to make for myself every day. 
So then I now know that the perfect gift basket to give you is a basket of Snickers. Right? I'll eat it all. Don't do it. Right. <laughs> and it's full of GMOs and nasty stuff. But if you give me a little Snickers, I will eat it. Oh, I'm mother. So good. I, I will. All right. So now let's kind of get into the mindset because obviously, you know, you've been working with many people who have rejected becoming a coach for many reasons, as well as other people who've decided to become a coach and just never have grown because they put these excuses as well. So to paint the picture, here you are living off in a different time zone, different continent where Coaching is not open in Japan. It's only available because you are on military bases. So obviously coaching is available in military bases, Canada and the US. And so mm -hmm. when you were deciding to become a coach, didn't you have those thoughts or the fears of how am I going to grow this business when I'm over here? Who, who am I going to connect with? Who is going to want to do this? What was your thoughts with growing it? Why did you want to grow it? In the beginning, I didn't want to grow it. I didn't care about the business. It was something to focus on aside from being a mom. Like I, I legit, Christine wouldn't have conversations with real life human beings for two weeks. And so when coaching came into my life, I'm like, this is an adult that I get to talk to. I don't have to hear like toddler gibberish. This is so amazing. Like I just go to like mommy and me fitness things that I would set up just because I wanted to be with an adult. Like it wasn't about the business to me at first. Yeah. It was simply, I want to save 25%. Shoot. If I could pay off ecology, I wouldn't feel as bad because we're on a one fixed income. Army didn't pay a whole lot. We were in EFA back then and we we're living overseas, which was expensive. And so I just wanted to kind of take that burden of the shakeology that I loved off of my husband. And so it didn't start out business mindset, but where it slowly started to evolve to that was I realized every day of what I love to do, waking up and talking to people about what I was doing or helping them with a the meal plan or talking to them about organic foods or anything like I realized I could get paid more for doing this. Like I'm already doing it. Mm -hmm. So if I just got a little bit more focused with it, a little bit better at it, we had 35 plus thousand dollars of debt. We were on WIC checks. I declined multiple times at a grocery store checkout aisle. And I don't know if you can relate to that, but that's a very embarrassing thing where you're like, I know I need this food for my family and this moment sucks right now. So yeah. I just wanted to do a little bit extra because I knew Adam couldn't possibly do anything more. Like he's on a fixed salary yeah. and he's already deployed all the time. So the little areas that he would make up for our family is when he would go on TDY temporary trip he would get paid a little extra per day and that man would eat peanut butter sandwiches just to say his per diem every day to have a little bit of extra money for our family so he just always went above and beyond for us and I wanted to not have him sacrifice as much I wanted him to be able to eat sushi with the guys you know and, and he could have but it was a choice he was making for yeah. our family so I made the choice to make coaching serious for us and I was like okay I'm gonna to get theory of the Dave Ramsey plan, which is an envelope system. I'm going to pay off our debt and I'm not even going to just help him. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And then I'm going to surprise the crap out of him when he comes home. Cause he was very skeptical about coaching in the beginning. Like he was cool when it was a hobby for me. Yeah. But the moment I said I was going to do a business, he was like, Oh, this is our last name. So I need to research this. Like this is network <laughs> marketing. I know like, what are we getting into? Am I going to get kicked out of the unit? Like it was all these questions and I did put a lot of time into it in the beginning and they weren't smart hours. They were dumb. It was me scrolling Facebook for seven hours. Like, who can I talk to? Who can I talk yeah. to? And he would make those little jokes. Like, did you make 12 cents an hour today, babe? And I'm like, I think I did. I, I think I did, but it was a good day, you know? Yeah. So it was just the little micro events of becoming a little bit more focused, seeing the money come in. And when he was able to come home from a deployment one time and I was like, sat down for our Monday money date. And I said, we don't, we don't have any debt anymore. It's coming. And he's like, coming to what? I'm like, yeah, yeah. We, we actually have a savings account. Like we do. We do. And he's like, from what? Like that, that coaching thing. And I'm like, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it works, you know? So it was to see that belief that what I was doing was paying off. And then after that, he was like, can I bathe the kids? Can, can I do the dishes? Like, can you go talk to someone else? Like, what can I do for you? Like, he just was so excited about the opportunity that we could provide a better living for ourselves. So it was gradual. I wouldn't say it was instant, but it, it was always fun to say the least. So uh, obviously, you know my story because you've heard it multiple times, but my husband was more in the same direction where he wasn't supportive of 
this business for himself. He was, he was fine. He's always supported me with fitness. But when I said I was going to do coaching, he just looked at it as, oh, she's taking on another give all of her time, make no money yeah. fitness job. Because that's what I did was just teach fitness. And I worked for Shalene and you give a ton of your time and you didn't get much back in money. And so when I decided to be a coach, that was the exact same thing. He just said, do what you want, but I want no part. And so yep. I said, okay. And so I did the exact same thing as you and built a business and it came to two and a half years into the business. And I had probably a, a little $30 check that he had to go deposit in the ATM because it was just hanging around the house. I said, can you just go put this in my savings account? And when he went to the bank, we had our separate bank accounts and then we had the joint one to pay the bill or the bills. And that's where, when he got the ATM slip and he saw all the money just hoarding in my bank account because I was a poor girl growing up. I hoarded <laughs> money. I didn't want to, I just wanted to see the numbers climb. I never wanted to give it away to anyone. And that's why he was like, what the heck is this? I said, this is what I've been doing. Like he had no idea. So it's funny. There's a parallel just in a different way. Yes. Okay. So a um, couple questions then. So what, when did you start coaching? And then when you did start coaching, like you said, you didn't really do it initially for business. But when did kind of the mindset mm -hmm. kind of switch for you that you're looking at yourself now as a leader that you can actually impact someone's life and to build a team? Absolutely. So I signed up April 18th, 2011. And at that time, I was told by each body that I was now a finalist for my results. And if I had enough votes that I could win a free trip to California for the summit. Okay. And I thought, well, this would be nice to even just see family because we couldn't afford plane tickets to the States. And so I was that obnoxious person, like barfing beach body, probably every 20 minutes. Like, did you vote for me? By the way, did you vote for me? Hey, remember me? Vote for me. You know, like nonstop. And so I won the trip and I was not going as a coach. I was going because it was a free trip. Like it was a free airline. I like that. That's cool. And I fell in love. Like I just fell in love with all the crazy fun people. I, that was the first time I met you in the hallway. I wanted to barf. I was like, Oh my gosh, there she is. Like, I don't even think I've, I don't even think I've said this out loud, but when we had the platinum presenters website, I was so worried that you would see me logging in so much. Cause I thought like you checked it every day. Like I wonder who's coming in. Did I use one of my coaches logins because I was like, well, I don't want her to see me. Like, I don't want her to think I'm crazy and like obsessed. Like no, literally, you that feel was like a total fire. BFF knowing that you're using know, right? the stuff I'm creating. I, I realize that now, but back then I was like, she's going to think I'm obsessed, which I was. <laughs> so, good. right. So I showed up there and I remember I'm sitting there and I, I don't have like, I don't have a team with me. I had one of my friends, Tara, and she really just came for more support. Cause I'm like, can you come with me to this thing? And so I'm sitting in this front row where they had us and there was an empty seat next to me. And I remember watching everyone go up and everyone there had their spouses. They had all the, the people they love with them. And then it was people telling their story and telling their story. And I remember Barbie Decker going up and I remember seeing you up there and holding a check and thinking to myself, why not me? Like, this is so stupid. Like I have what they have. Mm -hmm. Why was I doubting that I could even do this coaching thing? Like, why is this just a fun hobby to me? If I treated this like a business, I wouldn't have an empty seat, hopefully in a couple of years, if Adam wanted to make that decision to come home. And that was it. That was all it took was just seeing those stories of those other people and realizing that they weren't these network marketing pro geniuses who had master degrees, you know, with network marketing. It was just, they're people that love people and they're confident with who they are. And so my goal after that was that I wanted to do something every day that made me feel like I wanted to puke. And if I had that feeling every day, then I knew I was out of my comfort zone with my coaching, with my business. And I did every day. I would want to vomit. I'd make a video and I'd expose my spanks or I whatever. Like I'd cry about Adam being gone. And people were like, me too, girl. Me too. Like it was that me too effect where they could relate. And I felt like I wasn't sharing anything super secretive. I was just being honest. Mm -hmm. And if I continue to do that every day, that was how I started to build a following and build a business. And I was just consistent at that. And I had to learn to love the days that sucked because I wasn't always great every single day. There were days that it was really hard. I would cry myself to sleep because I missed Adam. I didn't want to do it. You know, I just didn't want to do life that day. I didn't want to adult, but yeah. I had to. And I knew that if I made the decision to adult every day and show up in my business, 
then everything eventually would work out and be fine. And so I, I would just say it was that moment at summit. I've just, why not me? Honestly, I mean, it doesn't seem that huge, but that was it for me. It was like, I can do this. No, it is huge because the energy of other people around you, but like you said, really seeing real people, not old men in suits, because obviously back in the day, that's just what I always envisioned for uh, people doing network marketing businesses. And, you know, I grew up from watching my dad trying to do Amway and never really succeeding and setting up all these dinner appointments to sit with people at their house. And then having the Avon lady come over to our house and sit there with like my grandma, like that's what I would see. And it would never was something that I was interested in either. Um, but I think live events, especially when you just really see a lot of people who are just like you who have fault and who are just excited about helping other people, but also growing themselves. I think that's so powerful. Um, but I think it, it, oh, for me, I was going to say platinum presenters. I think for me, I'm like, so there were all these people reaching out to me. I didn't know that when you become a finalist online, you either have a coach whistle next to you or you don't. So people know if you're a coach or not. So hindsight, it's so funny to think of like the people that reached out to me like, hey, great results. Are you a coach? And I'm like, these people are so nice. Like everyone is congratulating me. But it's because they said I wasn't a coach yet. So they were really smart. But I was like so overwhelmed, right? Like who am I going to go with? Who am I going to decide? What team am I going to go with? I had interview calls with some of the top coaches in the network and I picked platinum presenters because of how fun you guys looked I was like they tease their hair they wear bright colors they have yeah. dance parties like this is my jam like I was so excited of anything with glitter and so that's what I love about you in, in platinum presenters though is that you're not afraid to authentically be yourself and it's not the norm you know with certain things but it attracts the people that you're most like and so when I've heard your story and I'm like were we separated at birth? Like what happened? Yeah. And like, I feel like so much alike about it. It's because you've always just been you. And I think I was just naturally gravitating towards that. So I love well, that I'm, about our team. I'm glad you found those points because just the, the point that I'm wanting to, you know, talk about is I haven't always been telling my story or showing fault. And I started this business thinking that you have to lead strongly, you know, so that people will want to follow you. And I killed myself and I was five months pregnant when I started as a coach and had a one and a half year old son. But I killed myself trying to learn everything about this because I was responsible for training the team. And so that stressed me out. And I always tried to lead from this perfect position, but eventually that's just not you. And, it, and it's, it's, it's going to kind of wear on you. And I think it burns you out. Um, mm -hmm. but, but the other difference, you know, when I initially started was that uh, the company, so Beachbody, they were really strongly building this business old school, meaning that you only do it sitting down at dinner with a flip book with someone belly to belly, face to face is what they called it. But mm -hmm. the, a lot of where we came in, in 2008, we were already really focused on social media. I wasn't even on Facebook yet. I was on there in 2009, but I was on MySpace and YouTube. And we knew social media was definitely a place to be. And I think that was one of the stronger you know, assets that we had as a team and the leaders that I had alongside with me. But, but with, with this business, a lot of people really are nervous that they won't be able to rise to um, showing their real self, showing that they're fault, showing that this is a cluster F trying to get a, an interview to get started and the tech problems. I mean, there's going to be yeah. bad days, like you said, and you're going to get burned out. The business is always like this, no matter if you're a 85, 15 star diamond to a just regular emerald. It doesn't matter. You're always going to have ups and downs. And you said it, it's about the consistency. But the part that I really enjoy is that it constantly keeps me learning how to improve myself and be more valuable as a human, as a person and to be able to have more purpose in life. I feel more purposeful because I feel it is my obligation to become better as a leader and to inspire people more. So you're learning as you follow your way through Absolutely. success. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I think, it, and for me, it bled into other areas in my life that were so important. Like I had such anxiety every day. I would wake up worrying about Adam safety every single day and it would consume every thought I had. And I finally had to say to myself, I need to choose to either react or respond. Am I going to react to the situation when I hear something on the news and panic every single 
all the time and be like, is that his team? Is that them? Like worry myself or am I going to respond and say, I don't know the answer to that. And if it is, I'll, I'll react when it happens, but I'm not going to react now because I don't know. And that would be silly to let anxiety get the best of me. So instead I'm going to choose to respond. And a lot of times that meant not paying attention to the news, you know, and putting what I focused on became my fruition. And so I started to focus on personal development and I started to focus on, instead of looking at the faults in my marriage of doing marriage books, you know, with him from afar. And I had people saying to me, I want to join you with Beachbody coaching, but not because I want to buy this program from you. It's because I feel like I have so much to learn from you about life. Like, I feel like I could learn about my marriage with you. And I feel like I could learn about my kids with you. Noah had a speech delay occupational therapist struggled you know, with ADHD himself. And so I was looking to heal a lot of those things with organic foods. And I was cutting out diet. When I, when it comes to my family, I'll become obsessed, which is why I was a sign language instructor because I knew signs would help hearing babies with speech problems. And so it was those little things. I mean, some of my top six figure earners in my business currently are parents I met in sign language class mm. and they just knew Tara once gave me a tool to help my child with speech. I trust her. Her. I see her doing this beach body thing. I'm going to dress her all the same because she gives something her all when she commits. And that was the reputation I built for myself because I truly did, whether it was with photography or sign language or beach body, I never went halfway. I was all in or nothing. And so I think you have to do that with coaching. If you're going to be a coach and you decide like, I am going to work this business. I'm going to be a coach. You can't every day wake up and be like, mm, do I want to do it today? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do it tomorrow because someone's not going to choose you. They're going to choose someone that every day is like, I might suck today, but I'm still all in like 100%. And that, you know, it's, I think it's just the consistency factor of that for sure. Mm -hmm. And that brings up a really good point. So with you talking about your son with a speech delay and all, this is what I think it's just the law of attraction. And I, I did put up a podcast about that law of ACME, A-C-M-E, attraction, consistency, marketing, and energy, is that you're going to find a lot of like people, not just in this business, but it just, I think the universe really is bringing people together. And Tara and I do have so many alike things. So I struggled with multiple eating disorders. I tried to be anorexic. I tried to be bulimic. I tried to abuse fiber pills and I tried at all. Um, but mm -hmm. I also have a son who has speech delay too. And going through that whole issue and understanding there's mm -hmm. ADD too. It's just, it's crazy that there's so much alike. And I think we're about the same age too, right? Aren't we? <laughs> In our 20s? We are. We are. Yeah, for real. Yes, we are. So um, <laughs> this is the thing. It does attract the right people, the like people, and people who are driven towards purpose. So that is one of the big questions people have is, well, how are you really finding people, especially now, since you are a very seasoned coach, um, you've probably gone through your list, if you will. So how are you finding people then to really join you as a coach or work with you in this business in some capacity? The biggest thing that works for me today is the same thing that worked for me five years ago. I I have a point as like a storytelling ninja on social media. And so the only place I literally get leads in my business is Facebook. I have an Instagram account, but my ADD makes me forget about it like every three weeks. And so every three weeks I'm like, oh, hey guys, I'm still alive. Here's a pic, you know. <laughs> oh, but oh, I probably never signed up anyone over there. And if I have, that's awesome because I don't know about it. Mm -hmm. But my Facebook and my YouTube have been solid for me, but not just like I'm posting every day. Cause everyone can say, why well, post every day? And I don't get anything either. Mm -hmm. It's that I'm posting with purpose. I treat my Facebook like it is a day job. So when I have my power hour and I go to check in, I have my interest list on the left-hand side. And it is so titled and detailed about things like, you know, Dublin moms that I've met maybe at a park here in my neighborhood or whatever. I'm going to add them to that list because I do have ADD and I'm not going to remember where I met you from. So I'm going to put you in that list. And every day when I go to that list, I'm going there with a purpose. So now when I click on your name and you're in my newsfeed, I know why I have the intention to want to even follow you and engage with you. And it's not to just form someone, right? It's not right. like every day I meet someone, I'm like, I'm going to get them. I'm going to put them on an interest list. I'm going to get them. Right. I don't think like that. I want to make sure we are going to be alike and that I want to work with them. I, I'm meticulous about who's going to be in my tribe. It's not like I want to just sign anyone who breathes, right? right? It's 
am I most alike them? Are we going to get along? You know, how can I help them? And so I like them. I comment on their stuff and then I'm addicted to videos. And so back in the day that used to be YouTube videos for me, a lot of them are all on my channel. You can see how bad I sucked a couple years ago, but you know, people watch me now and they're like, well, yeah, you're just such a nap videos. So of course that works for you. No, really go watch my old videos. I was awful. Like I'm pretty sure I sounded like a Valley girl who said so in like every two seconds. <laughs> That's great. But now I've had to learn by going to Bowie Sins Academy, going through a lot of Shalene Johnson seminars, going through everything I could get my hands on, watching Christine, Googling other people, YouTube and practicing. Cause when you practice something that is the God given talent or craft. So mm -hmm. For me, I felt his calling for me was to be behind a camera. I used to want to be the news anchor like Katie Couric. That was like my huge why. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do it someday. I, news is so boring, but I wanted to be behind a camera. So instead, I get to do coaching. It's kind of worked out. I get my own schedule. But, you know, I, I just, I choose to talk to one person every day. And a lot of times the content that I'm talking about is something I'm currently currently working through in that exact moment, mm -hmm. but instead I'm talking myself through it. And so when I say, have you ever felt like that? I have, this is, I know how you feel. This is how I felt. This is what I found. They're watching every day and they may be silently watching. Maybe they're not commenting, but one month I'm someone and three months later I signed the same person that was watching three months ago, but not commenting, but I've been consistent. So they've been watching me for the same three months. And it's the reason why I have never missed a month of success club because I keep showing up with purpose. And I feel like if you find that platform, I always tell my coaches, do not feel like you have to master every social media platform or you will burnt out and you will be mediocre because you're going to be stretched so thin yeah. if you're on Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook and blogging and a website and a letter and an opt-in. If you can handle all that, great, mm -hmm. awesome. But the average person can't. They need one to two things to focus on. And I don't know if this is just an ADHD thing. I think it is. But because I have ADHD, I get hyper-focused on something that I love, excited about, which is videos. So when Facebook Live came out, I was so mad that Android users did not have it. I went and bought an iPhone, and then that night it went live on Android. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me right now. Right. So I took my iPhone back. But I was that committed. I was like, I have to be on Facebook Live. And so for me, that's where I find my people, is just trying to talk to one person. And it's not me doing fitness videos. It's not me talking about food all the time. It's life. It's reading a personal development book, taking my favorite paragraph, applying it to maybe a lesson that happened to me when I was five years old. And someone's going to, they're going to watch and they're going to think, gosh, she's like my best friend. It's yeah. how I feel when I watch Fit Rapper. Like Joanna doesn't know it, but one day we're going to hang out. I mean, it's going to happen. Yeah. Like it has to happen. But I feel like people feel that way when they watch my videos because they tell me that. Like yeah. you make me feel at home. I'm comfortable watching you. So so I'm comfortable being out to you when I finally decided that I wanted help. So I think it's just making people feel comfortable. So you brought up a good point about the fitness and nutrition side of things. So many people, again, think that you have to be a fitness professional or a nutrition expert to be able to, first of all, be a coach. But then is that the type of content that you have to start to put up on your social media feed? So what do you say to that? Heck no. I don't think I talked about fitness when I first started coaching at all. I mean, I would kiss my Shakeology or I'd be sweaty, you know, or whatever, but everyone starts off doing that because you're really excited. Whereas now I almost look at this as an intrinsic priority. It's when people come to me, the type of tribe that I've created, the type of following that I, when people come to me, they can work out. They just need a little bit of guidance with, with understanding organic foods because that's, that's my niche. That's what I talk about day in and day out so on my blog. I'm passionate about people know that be drinking something, you know, and it, it's branding, but we'll see the stuff, you know? So I don't, I don't think you do. I think you have to learn to talk about what is natural for you to talk about. You can't force yourself. That's a square into a, you know, a round box or whatever you focus about what you're good at. And one of the exercises I have all of my coaches do when they sign up, you know, in the very beginning is brain dump. And that's just writing everything down on a piece of paper that comes to mind that you're good at anything. Like maybe someone says, how do you organize your kids' clothes? They're always so stressed, cute. Yeah. And you're like, no, they're not. 
but that's obviously something you're good at if everyone says that to you. So you've yeah. got to share that system. And I, on, I think too, in coaching, opposites attract. And so in my business, if people are familiar with any Johnson gems, I am a hardcore Ruby Sapphire. Mm-hmm. I suck so bad at Emerald because I'm just, I'm not a details person. And I attract a lot of Emerald and Pearl. And it's because Emeralds want to learn how to be fun and sapphire and competitive, right? So they, they are attracted to those people because they want to learn what they have. And so you have to learn like a marriage communication. Mm-hmm. How am I going to work with that person? Because we are completely opposite. They want to have a detailed plan. And I'm like, why? Just go with it, right? Like just do it. But that causes them anxiety. So I think as a person, it's also me. It just makes me evolve. It makes me a better person. I have to also learn. I can't just say, sucks you're not like me. I have to learn how to help coach them and mold them and talk to them in their language, just like you would with a marriage or a partnership. So yeah. it's, it, of, it's definitely made me grow as a human. As a human. A lot of people really feel, especially as they're getting started with coaching and they're encouraged to start to promote more uh, content marketing on social mm-hmm. media to use their Facebook or Instagram more for than just showing, you know, pictures of the sunset or your cute new dog. So when people are trying to put up ideas and content, like you said, there's a lot that people do really well, but they don't realize that they even know how to do it really well. So with, with someone trying to figure out what do I talk about, what really are they going to be talking about um, every day? Because for instance, if you are great at you know, putting your kids' clothes together and outfit together, you know, that, that's probably not gonna be what you talk about every day. So what really is natural and easiest for someone who is growing as a coach and using the products, what can they do to put up content every day that really just shows someone I'm consistent, I'm in it, and um, I'm moving forward? There's two things. Number one, when you read your personal development book, you should be trying to take a story from that personal development book that you read every day. Because if you can't think of something to say after a chapter that you read, you did it. You just read the words, but you didn't apply it to your life. Because if you apply it to your life, there is a takeaway. There is something that you can say to your social media, but don't just type it up and put it in a meme. Like, hey, hey, PD for day. People aren't going to read that. They want to know how that related to you. So I'm not saying type it up and put it on there. I'm saying relate it, share it with people because that, that's going to force you to open up things that you didn't even know existed. Like I didn't even know that I had daddy issues before I joined coaching. But as I started to read personal development books, I'm like, gosh, I am so messed up. What? What's wrong with you know but I started to share that and open up with people and other people were like hey me too so you know telling people to read a personal development book I can always tell when a coach of mine is not reading personal development I just can I'm like you're not reading you're lying to me I know you're not but secondary not trying to make sure that you're on every single day and so one of the things that I took from Shalene John when I had a day that I was just on, we know when we have those days, we're just pumping with ideas. It's a great day. Type up your post and it at least has to wake up and you're like, life sucks today. I'm not motivational. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to take a selfie of my face because I have cystic acne right now. So instead you go to your Google drive, you grab it, you post it and no one's going to know the difference. They're not going to know that you're having a crappy day because you're putting it. And that's not to say that everything has to be butterfly and rainbows. I think you also have to show people that non highlight reel, but you have to be very careful about how often you share that non highlight reel because you could become negative. You could become a black cloud where they're always like, okay, she's very honest that she falls off with her fitness room every three days. But I think that's a little oversharing, right? Like, have you ever heard that commercial? They're like, you've posted seven times about your yoga blog today. That's oversharing. I love that commercial, but You know, it, it's just, it's having a schedule a little bit, not like a, a date, but just having a backup plan where you can pull something and post it if you're having a moment where you're like, I don't know what to talk about. And I, I honestly think you have to do what works for you. So when I first started, I don't remember who it was, but they were like, if you're posting pictures of your kids, stop. What do you want to see pictures of your kids? And I like really slowly went like this. I was like, <laughs> because my kids got the most likes. Yeah. Like I would make a post about, Noah and he'd get 600 likes and I would make a post that I worked on for three days and it was like five mm-hmm. and now I'm, I'm, saying, I'm like what happened here you know but I had to learn that I had to do what worked for me and I had to realize that 
the, pe- the people loved the pictures of my family is because my family is my story. Mm-hmm. They wanted Adam to come home just as bad as I did. So when I posted a picture of Noah holding his daddy doll with his dog tag of him and Adam on watching a movie with his dad while he was in Afghanistan on a Skype king c- computer, that was heartstrings that that pulled at people. That was, yeah. I was letting them in as a reality TV show, so to speak. And so I had to learn that even though some of the gurus I looked up to were telling me not to do that, that yeah. was my niche. That was what worked for me. And so you have to listen to your heart on what is working for you because it turned out pretty well for me. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's still, my kids still get a lot of likes, but um, still yeah, likes. they still get a lot of likes. Well, you know, that's a good point with, for instance, I talk a lot about fitness. Obviously, I'm a fitness professional, so I do talk a lot about fitness because I want to be able to help people. That's just my nature is I always want to help people just get to a faster, easier solution of success. So I do share those times like you. I don't like working out. So yes, I am a fitness professional for over 25 years, but I don't like working out. If I have that choice to not work out that day, I won't but I have to because I'm making that commitment. So I know for myself, by being a coach and even being a fitness professional, it has lessened me from a yo-yo. So you struggled with weight and um, I want people to know because again, myself, I struggled with my weight that you don't just fix it, but you have to build Mm -hmm. layers and levels of accountability, but more so tools and systems that will keep you more closer to a healthier state than that sweeping negative, you know, eating Snickers in a car and pretending you're not. So now, I mean, how, how do you gauge, how do you keep yourself accountable and, and how is your relationship with your weight and staying strong with it? I have to, Adam and I, I had to tell him one day because in 2012, when I was a top 10 coach, coach actually spiraled into anorexia and I landed in the hospital. I had pneumonia three times in a month because my body was shut down. I was working like crazy because Adam was gone and it wasn't that I was obsessed with work. It was, I was obsessed with busy. It kept my mind off of him being gone. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, like, I was just like, okay, I, I'm not eating. And I told myself for so long, my friends would be like, did you eat today? And I'm like, yeah, of course I did. But yeah. I was saying it because I didn't want them to hound on me or harp on me, but I didn't have anyone in the house to say, why isn't there been food in the, in the fridge for two weeks? So now that I'm home, it's so healthy for me because I'm able to say, if you see me slipping up, I'm telling you, this is something I work on every day. I don't think it's anything, honestly, that my body will forever be like one day like oh that'll never happen she'll never trigger that again it's a reminder every day that I can't fall into that because my whole body is affected my hair becomes awful my nails become awful everything is awful and I'm a mom and I have a daughter now and I have to be a health example for her and I have to remind myself that I am so important to take care of and so Adam is my reminder and he does prepping with me with food he's awesome with it my mother-in-law comes up and she's always what's for dinner? Are we eating? What are we cooking? You know, so it's been since 2012, since I've fallen, you know, in that awful of either side of the binging or, or not eating. But I think it's because I'm in a very healthy state of loving who I am, loving the imperfections, loving even the stretch marks, any yeah. of that. I don't look anymore as this awful body image. I truly am in love, you know, with, with the skin that I have. And I think that it's just been a lot of years coming to get to that point. But I think it's important for coaches to know, even the top coaches struggle with that. You know, you see us and you think she you know, money can fix anything or whatever. And, and it can't, you know, it's just something I have to work on every single day, but it's, um, it's progress, not perfection as they always say. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also your personal development, you know, so constantly feeding your brain to, you know, work on yourself is going to help love yourself to maturity too, I think. Um, All right. So as we wrap this up, I just want to take people to now where you are, you know, where you're living and what, you know, what's up with Adam? Is he still gone for months? Like, what's the deal with your life now? Yeah. So he got out um, about a year and a half ago. That was a decision that was hard because he had to make it, you know, I always said why I was to bring him home. That's what I wanted to do. But it didn't mean that he was like, yeah, sure, I'm coming home. Right. 
he was always like, you know, great. That's a great plan B, babe. You know, totally work on that. And maybe one day I will. I don't know. Like, I think I'm a lifer. I don't know. I love what I do. And I always supported that. I never pushed it on him, but I always wanted to make sure that my business was so solid. So if the day did come where he was like, I'm done, I'm like, great, let's go. Like, we're good. You know, let's go. And that was 2012 for him. We lost two teammates on his team and he has a 12 man team. So that was a hard hit that, you know, we, we, I had heard of people that we lost in the overall big unit, but I wasn't close to them. And so I always felt like Adam was invincible or bulletproof. And when you lose a friend like that and you realize it's just so close to home, that was Adam's aha moment where he he was like, I, I want to be home with you guys. I want to be home with you. I want to be home with the kids. I want our children to have a dad. And I was already at seven figures at that point with his account. So I wasn't officially in the millionaire circle. You have to hit it with just your name, but we were fine to, for him to get out. And he submitted to the army um, out early with a financial statement. They looked at it. They were like, so that thing your wife does like, really works. So I think, I think they all thought it was a joke for the longest time, but um, we got out and we built a house here in Columbus, Ohio. We had a third baby. She's 14 months now. And, and he's told me, but I think it's important to also tell people that just because you build your business to a certain point, like you're always going to be for life. And this business has been such a blessing with where we are because he's been struggling with PTSD in the last, you know, year and a half have just been so hard for him. And for him, I, I can imagine me getting out because I wanted to be safe and home with you guys, but having to go to a corporate nine to five job and having to try and deal with these issues that I'm having or the physical pain in my back or my knees and having him just thank me for still loving what I do and waking up every day and still treating this like a business every day because it's allowed him to heal. It's allowed him to have that time to process. And so I think this business, it's so much bigger than just, you know, you might see someone say like, Oh, we're home every day together. You know, a lot of quiet times that are still hard that we still have to push through, but it's something I'm so grateful for because it's allowed me to, like you said, work on other things that I'm passionate about. I'm hosting my first event called the power of me too. We sold out in two days. Like it was insane. I was like, Oh my gosh, people want to come to this. This is awesome. And you know, creating my own carganics line of facial organic stuff and oh, wow. going to South Africa on a team missionary trip. Like the vision is so much bigger than coaching now, but it didn't start out that way. It was yeah. just this little tiny idea. That's exactly the whole point of this is that you don't know what you're going to do, but you're starting with something that you're just passionate with. And then as you start to really dive into it and become successful, that's where then you become a lot more uh, skilled yourself. You become a lot more of a leader. You obviously create more income that it does open up your vision. It takes the blinders off of what more is possible. Mm-hmm. And, and it unleashes a lot of the fire inside of you. Like you said, you're going on a missions trip and creating your own skincare line. Like who would have thought you would have done that years ago, you know, with starting this, but this has allowed you to be able to move into yeah. something that you love so much. And, and something just to come back with Adam, for those of you guys who really want to find out more about him, you can go to Tara because I know that those two do live streams and they do share the story about PTSD and all. Um, but the thing is, is with Adam, as much as I know, and I don't know him a ton, and it's funny because Tara and I ran into each other at Walt Disney in March. <laughs> she was there and I was there with my kids. And um, just seeing him there and just really seeing um, – him home and just present with the family. It felt good, you know, to see you all together. But if you go and follow him, he he was a green beret. It's not just something you can easily sign up for and then whimsically just say, yeah, I'm done. Like that would be a really hard decision to formally work so hard with a broken foot when in this story that he talks about is crazy. The physical stuff he had to do on a broken ankle and foot But to work so hard to get to something so elite and then decide to move away from it because your quality of life, your happiness, your family is that important part. And now sharing and expressing um, the the suicide rate because of PTSD and that is a mission that you both are really focusing on more so, of course, him, because Mm -hmm. people are, you know, really succumbing to that and losing their life 
because they yeah. can't manage something. So I, I love that you guys are sharing this part of your journey as well. Yeah. And that's something, you know, that I'm so proud at him for. I had no idea. He, he did his first Facebook live and it blew up. I mean, it was just like 300,000 views within 24 hours. It was crazy. Yeah. And it was just because it was something so raw and so on and not a lot of people talk about and people look at him as a green beret someone who was invincible bulletproof like I used to and to hear him say the VA has numbed me with just narcotics and meds and I'm off like I'm done I'm done because this is the life that I want to live and this this isn't what I want to live right now but you know I think too something so important to tell anyone who's tuning in where you're like okay I can relate to what some of these girls are saying, but I don't like the, like the big hair. I don't like the jewelry. I don't like the flowers, right? Like that's my thing all the time. I like to do it sometimes, but do they always do this? Or are they always like this? Mm -hmm. I watched one of um, Christine's housewife things because I had never watched the show. I was like, what, what am I supposed to say? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. We didn't have kale in Japan. And so I'm so out of the loop with some of this stuff. But I watched it and I was laughing so hard. And I thought if I was a housewife, I don't think there's a character that's most like this, but I would be Katniss Everdeen because I am such a tomboy at heart. Like I, my neighbor the other day, I was outside like putting like fertilizer. I looked a mess, you guys. And my neighbor came out and she was like, her husband's name is Todd. She's like, Todd, what is she doing? What is she doing? Like she was freaking out because it wasn't the norm. You know, it wasn't the norm for where we live. And I had to laugh because I, that's me. I love to get glammed and dolled up every once in a while, but on my day-to-day -day basis, I have to show you guys this because it's really funny. What? This is what I typically have, okay? Here's, here's my collection. This is my favorite, so this is what you're going to have to do if you become a coach. Yep. Um, literally, I just, every day, it's a hat. I have a million choices. I've got my Star Wars hat. I've got my coaching hat. I like hats. And so you have to decide if you're going to become a coach that you have to be comfortable with who you are. You can't worry about like, am I gonna fit in 100%, 20% 20, 20 all the time or whatever. You just come as you are. And if you rock a baseball cap, that's what you do. If you like to get glammed up, that's what you do. But you're so accepted on this team. And that was the biggest blessing that I ever had was joining this team. And in all honesty, is Christine had it so laid out on her website. Like I logged in and I'm not an emerald by trait, but I was so hungry for information and knowledge and I didn't have to be like, where do I go? Because it's all right there. And a lot of people ask me, you know, as a 15 superstar diamond coach, do you have all of your own website and stuff? And I'm like, no, that's dumb. Because Christine already has it. Like, I have my own little mini systems that I up. But for the most part, I'm like, we're a PP. Go to Christine. Like, she's the, she's the master. Like, the Jedi master. I'm not. I'm like I'm a Jedi learning. So. <laughs> you know, so... I, that, that's what you have to do though when you coach is you just have to plug in and you have to show up every single day and you think about well I don't know where I'm going to be in 10 years or five years or whatever you just show up every day and then eventually you're going to look back and you're like, like how did I get here mm -hmm. <laughs> what questions are they going to ask me can I answer them because I don't know if I know the exact answer right. but it's because you just show up you do. You just well, show up. there is one big difference then. So you said that you um, like to get dressed up every so often. I don't. So <laughs> I don't. I'm always in a messy bun in workout clothes and barely ever have anything on. And it's funny because my husband didn't, husband didn't know that the necklace thing was a joke to the housewives, the real housewives. And so when, he, when I was getting set up, he goes, oh, that's fun. <laughs> Put a necklace on and you're dressed up. I said, well, that's the joke of the show. They all wear necklaces. So no, we don't get all pretty. But to, to help you guys as we uh, finish this up, for those deciding you know, to become a coach, first of all, go reach out and talk to your coach if you connect with them you're working with them and you want to find out more even about coaching just to answer more questions that you might have or to find out more than nuts and bolts please go to them but if you are joining my team platinum presenters which Tara is a part of it's not that everybody has to just go to whatever training I have because just like I interjected is I don't know it all I'm constantly just learning and when I figure something out I just create a training for it and then put it out but I'm constantly learning, like you guys saw in the very beginning of this, this uh, mess of uh, Zoom that I'm doing, is I was watching a training that one of my coaches, Janelle Summers, she was doing. So you're constantly learning from other coaches and you're putting that together. Now you can have your own training system and all, but there is a training 
site and it's called Plant and Presenters University that when you do sign up, you just plug right in, in and it walks you through day by day of what to do to get set up. So for training, I know that's usually what a lot of people are always trying to figure out. Well, what do I do when I get started? You're going to be working directly with the person that you're choosing to become a coach with. So they are your trainer, your sponsor, your, your mentor. But the resources and tools, Beachbody has a complete system, but also your team, whoever you're with, it should they should have a system as well. So as we finish this, I, of course, I'm so glad that you guys were able to be on. And again, if you are working with a coach, please reach out to them to, you know, follow up and tell them, yes, I'm ready to go or answer any other final questions that you might have. If you are looking to get signed up with Tara, Tara, how can they find you? You can go to my website, it's just taracar.com, or you can shoot me a message on my business like page. Not my personal, my like page. <laughs> okay. um, that's where you can find Tara. And if you are looking to sign up with me, yes, I would love to still have you as well. You can go to thecoachedge.com and fill out that little questionnaire so I know kind of person you are. And then I'll reach back out to you so we can chat a little bit more. But appreciate you being so open, Tara. This was really fun. You made me laugh a lot. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Feeling. Got this feeling in my body.